Continuing the questioning here at 10.40 a.m. Again, the question was asked, what do you think this perpetrator's ultimate goal was? Self-satisfaction or making himself feel that he satisfied the child? Making himself feel like he satisfied the child. Every child molester wants to satisfy the child so the child will come back. How do you think he would have achieved that goal? By doing whatever he felt that the children wanted him to do. Do you think him making the child trust him was the satisfaction he would have gotten? Oh, yes. If he, if he got the child into a, in, you know, to, let's say me and your friends, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've, we've seen each other a few times and we got together a little bit, and I inadvertently came off to you, you know, being like, you know, man, I just, I, I like, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to feel crazy about this, but, you know, I, I, you know, I just always wanted to do something with you. You know, I, I mean, we're friends, you know, I, you know, I understand how it goes, you know, we don't have to, that sort of thing. Uh, he's going to place himself where the child feels more comfortable, where the child maybe, let's say the child, let's say we're, we're going to hypothetically, we're just going to pick one of the parents. We'll pick, uh, we'll pick Branch's father. Here's a person who's is not really child's father. He's not the biological. biological father. He's with the child. The child, he plays with this child, he almost take care of this child from the time he's grown up. And him, him and his wife have some marital problems. The child sitting on there and the child, he knows this is child, you know, he can rub his leg or he can, you know, do things, they go do things together, they go out together. They really become close friends in in one sense. Well, let's just say that during the time the male, the man, decides it's not like that just comes out like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna molest you right now, you know, I'm gonna just do that. No. It's a working you know, it's an art to it. I mean you you got to sit there and go over your mind how you want to handle this, if something happens, how do you back off, how do you make it out, if you're know, sorry. So you got to inadvertently make the child think that what you're doing is okay. But let's just say that he's gotten to that point. The child feels a little apprehensive at first, but he's going to, you know, let the child breathe a little bit. I mean, he's going to give the child more satisfaction. He's not going to, even though he's satisfying himself, he wants the child, he wants the child to be extremely satisfied so that he won't keep his mouth shut. I mean, we're not, we're not talking, here, I'll give you a cookie if you keep your mouth shut, all right, here's five dollars, don't say nothing to your mother. We're talking a guy who can, you know, be any average Joe who can sit there and manipulate the child into doing what he wants. Well, if you get the child to start that, well, let's just say that branch and his three buddies, you know, they were two buddies, whatever, they they play together, run around together and everything, and they coming over, or they're going out, or they went to this area that they were murdered in, and they their stepfather goes out there, or whatever, he's out there, he play, pitches with them, and he does a lot of things with these boys, and he inadvertently, you know, does things with the child that the other boys see. And let's say that uh, Branch says, uh, you know, such and such, you know, they were wondering about this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, he feels, oh, I uh, understand, don't worry. They sit down there talking. Well, now the, the man, let's say, let's say the man feels that, uh-oh, uh man, I might be caught. So he, they're going to they're gonna go up to the, they're going to go to the police. They're going to go to the Department of Social Security. They're going to take away my, my wife. They're going to take away my child. They're going to take away everything I've ever worked for. Everything's going to come in like a volcano. <laughs> Just cave in like an earthquake. So he's got him out there, and he's talking to him. And he gets apprehensive about it, and he just, bam, just killed one of them. 
Well, you can't stop there because that's just like if I pulled a gun out here and shot you. You're going to sit there and say, you know, I won't say nothing. I promise. I won't say nothing. No. I have to shoot you too. So he ends up a domino effect. And he done killed all three of them. Even though he's in psychologically now. Psychological. I, mean, I use Branch not because... I use Branch for one reason. I use that child because... It worries me that he's more jumpy to go to the press. He's more jumpy to go to the news media. Where the Moors, you know, they, they don't want nobody to, you know, just get out of my life. You know, what, what happened to my child? This is a typical upset family. But the branches are making it out like, you know, you know, I want this son of a call, you know, I know this by the lot fires in a similar area. But the reason why I say branch is because uh, this is not his biological child. Man. This is a child that uh, he has got with because of the mother. So remorsefully, technically, he wouldn't be killing his own child. But where I'm just using that hypothetical. I'm not saying that I'm not sitting here going, yeah, Mr. Branch did it, because I'm not that wouldn't be my way of doing it. Now if I was say if I got around in certain areas I found out more information and the suspect felt because this this hypothetical say, you know, in a situation like this if I was to push on a suspect, it'd have to be somebody extremely close. You said that these folks really are satisfied through the satisfaction of the child, or they're feeling they're satisfied. The they're satisfied with the child. What? Right. Power and control is, right. is, is a child molester's most talking, talking, talking about power. Do you think it's necessarily a sexual thing or a power thing? Oh. There might be a difference. It was, yeah. That's like, well, I mean, it's, it's got to, if, if it's a sexual molestation, it is. Power and control in a child abuser's uh, opinion, you know, who's physically abused, the physical aspect is the power. The physical beating is the power. The sexual molestation is the power. The mental draining is the power. These are all the powers and control. Um, manipulation, manipulating the whole thing is the key. I mean, that's the key to power and control. It's like, uh... Or that be torture? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the torture part of it could be sexual also. Yes. Okay. I mean, you think the perpetrator sexual, under that... that you got to realize that sexuality of, of any perpetrator, whether it's a rapist, whether it's a child molester, whether it's a necrophiliac, whether it's whatever kind of sexual perverted person you want to think, this world is covered with sexual perversions. I mean, we have people who don't care. They're married, but they run around with their wives. Why? Because they think it's okay? No, because they're sexually perverting that point, but they don't feel that way. But it's a form of sexual wrongness there. Because what are they getting out of the other woman? It ain't love, really. They say it's love. They say it's this, but they're only getting sex because they're married to another person. If they didn't love this person and wasn't going to marry, they'd get rid of it. They say, it's okay, uh, we got to get a divorce. I'm going here. And when you got a person, let's say, who leaves their wife for this other woman, he left her, she's out of the picture. Okay, he didn't really love his wife because he got rid of her. He, he may have loved her or thought he loved her, but now he loves this other person, so it's a switch. And, you know, we can't turn love off like hot water. We don't, you know, cold water, hot and cold water don't work that way. You have to feel something. Well, in every sexual perversion, even in murder, even even in cold-blooded murder, I got a nut. You have to. I mean, anybody that walks up and is just a stalker, we'll use a stalker for this, because this is the big thing now, as people say. Stalkers are having an orgasm just by stalking their prey. It's like the hunt. 
you guys hunt? Y'all ever go deer hunting? You know how you're sitting in the tree and you've been sitting in that deer stand and you may have a bow and arrow, let's say, because that's mostly a lot of the guys' real advantage because that's what the drilling pumps up. Because when you pull back that bow, knowing you're going to hit this deer, when you pull back, the drilling is pumped. You are getting a, an extreme high. It's like a natural high. In sex, natural high. In all four, that's why they call it in a sexual way. Your, your drilling has been pumped up. There's uh, whatever all these sexual um, analysts want to say, there's a thing in the back of the brain that causes you to have these sexual uh, desires and it makes you overwhelmed when you're your sexual fantasies, all, they're all combined in the same group. So when you let go of that arrow and, that, and it hits that deer, when you know you hit the deer, you feel the boom. It's like, it's like you just you just got your orgasm right then. You just had it. Well, when the deer runs off and then you got to spin and trace and look around for now you're playing the investigative game. Now you got to find the deer. Well, when you, after, when you finally find the deer, then you feel... Yeah, the manly beast of yourself. Then you, you feel like the hunt is over, the deer is dead, it's over with, now you go. Now you go about to another one, or you do something else. Uh, it's over with. Does a person have, does a hunter have remorse for killing a deer? No. I mean, this is the same psychological profile of this guy who did these three murders. He's not, it's, to him, it's like a hunt. He's done got an orgasm off of this. I mean, I, I, I can only say that. I mean, he really got it. You know. And probably during the killing, it probably even made him more angered. You know, I mean, he probably just, by the way that I've understood the beatings, this guy probably, after he did one, he just, it just extremely switched that switch in his head and what he did just, to him, he didn't even know it. I mean, it's like it didn't even happen. I mean, now with the media, he's like, he could be, he could, he could be sitting there watching the media and saying, damn, I'll tell you, that's a crazy individual. They ought to get that some bitch. He could be any John Doe. But you have to. The evidence is going to prove because you've got, he's got to leave something. He has got to leave a trail because everybody does. And let almost. Me, let me ask you a question. Do you consider yourself to be above average, average, or greatly above average intelligence? Average. You're average. Average. Okay. You're talking into insights into people's minds. Is this just a hobby of yours as how they think about things, or is this just how you think about yourself? I have to I have to sit here. What? How would I go about this, you know? I, you know, I've done time in prison. I, convi I was, I'm, I'm a, you know, I was convicted for a sexual molestation. What I was your breaking point? Why did you finally say this is enough? It's not right. I'm going to tell on myself. I'm going to confess to this. What, what made you? Feel I, that? I was sitting there. It happened in, on May 16th, 1988. I just got to the point where my wife was sitting there saying, you know, we were, she was upset. She was saying that, you know, this was going on. And my mind was sitting there and thinking of this. You know, I'm going, yes, I've been doing this. I mean, God, you know. And I thought back to one incident. And that was the incident where I, where I was sexually assaulting my stepdaughter. I had followed her. I had performed cunnilingus on her. I had her give me a blowjob. I had everything going and I was sitting there playing with her and I could feel my fingers sliding in and I pulled out because she you could tell she was you know jumping back and it was causing her some pain and at that point you know it was like this demon inside me that said oh yes I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this this is mine. I'm going to conquer it, like, form. And when I tried it again, and I kept persisting, and she stopped me, and I was just, you know, I just felt okay. And I had gotten such a enormous high, as they say, out of it, 
where I, when I, because when I, at the time she was masturbating me and I was masturbating myself and masturbating her and all that, that when I ejaculated and everything, I mean, I was, it was just all over the place. And then afterwards, you know, I came to the realization of what I was doing. After, when it, during that time, the person ejaculates and everything, then it comes, then it, their penis dies down and everything, then they come back. It's like they just, they come back to reality. And I sat there and went downstairs and my stepson wanted to know, you know, when's his turn, basically. Because uh, he knew that it was a switch off and on. And I didn't know exactly what to do, so I said, okay. Uh, what do you want to do? And he, we were throwing things around, you know, well, I could give you a blowjob or blah, blah, blah. And he ended up having annual sex with me. Well, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and they went to bed. My wife came in from uh, working, and I was laying there on the bed and everything, you know, half asleep, and she kind of woke me up praying with me and everything and she said you know she was extremely hot and all this stuff and blah 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 and I ended up having sex with her when, when I did I started having annual sex with her and my mind flashed back to when her son just got fucking me in the ass so it was a kind of another high all of a sudden so here I am fucking my wife in the ass thinking about my son fucking me in the ass and it went on and we had intercourse and then I went up, and when I got up the next morning, I went in there to tell my stepdaughter, be quiet, don't say anything about what happened. And my wife was standing at the door, and she was wondering, what the hell am I doing whispering to her? What was I whispering about? And she knew what was going on. She knew I'd been having, you know, I was sexually molested. And I just made it, I, it's nothing, don't worry about it. And I left and went to work. Well, she came by and stopped me when I was at work, and she was upset. She, know, she said she knew what was going on. And she said, you need to get some help. You are, you, you've got to do something. And I sat there in the car, and I thought about it over and over, and I said, she's right. She is so right. I am having fantasies about having, doing something with my stepson, and, and doing it with her, and doing it with uh, my stepdaughter, and what, where is it going to lead to, you know? So I said, I've got to go get some help. This is, this is just. So I went to a psychiatrist and I told him, and next thing you know, I was on my way to prison. Do the person generally do, a person's been sexually abused due to their victim what was done to them? Or does it really have any bearing on it? It don't have no bearing. Okay. I mean, It's, it all starts off as being a... What would you ask this person, if you really felt like this person had something to do with this, what, what would you ask them? What would be your first question? After you got the, the bullshit out of the way, who are you, what's your name, and all that, what is your question? You well, would how would I them? question? One, I would ask, uh, the questions I would ask a, a sus suspected person, would be the number one question, the main question would be, what do you think about, um, this, we're saying child molesting again, okay. what do you think about a guy who sexually assaults a child? What do you think about an individual who, you know, does something with a child, you know, and, and, and be derogatory, you know, don't be, don't, you know, come up. Be derogatory, just make it up, because most child molesters get offended by, you know, statements, like baby rape, um, um, a kitty bopper, um, sexual perverted individual, or make it, I mean, make a guy think, you know, because this, this guy is really um, a child molester, He's going to take offensive 
of being the same. You know, not me. And I know I'm a sex offender. I know I'm a child molester. So it don't seem like it can't bother me. You know, you can say if you want to sit here and say you're a perverted, no good, you know, you're psycho, you, you, you're the bottom. Of the you know, fuck you. It don't matter to me because I know I am. But if this guy was that type, he would he would take a, in a very offended position on it. You know, make him come out. See what see what kind of story he's going to give you as being a child molester. Because see, <laughs> number one, only a child molester knows what a child molester does. I mean, I can sit here and go into a room and have it full of guys who've been convicted of child molestation. But if, um, but do you think? That but if, I mean, if you're going to sit there and deny it, you'll know it. Do you think there's any questions with fail to ask? That's hard to say. I mean, I'd have to sit. If I was, we've asked you. Do you what you've asked, asked me? Anything? No. Because I mean, see, you you can't ask me any question that you know. Because if I was, if let's hypothetically say I murdered these boys, I couldn't be able to come up with any correct answer or any answer that was bearing for the question. In other words, the person that you would be asking at would try to form the question into a question. Let's say I was denying. Okay. In denial, the guy is going to try to manipulate. You know, he's feeling on the hot seat. He's going to try to manipulate the situation. He's being questioned about something. Now, if he has any guilt whatsoever, he's going to try to put it off or something. He's going to try to con you into thinking of something else to inadvertently put it off, you know. He can't come off, he's going to try to deny everything, so he can't come off and tell you anything. Certain questions you've got to ask if, first of all, if this was a sexual uh, situation, uh, ask him derogatory sexual questions like, um, have you ever molested a child in your life? Don't say, have you ever, have you ever molested a child uh, too much in your life? I mean, were, were you fucking 12 years old and you, you, you molested this little 40-year-old? Be like that. Just, you know, let him know. Because if the guy had done it, he, he's going to, you know, jump. You know, he's going to be a bird. I molested, I molested a child when I was, uh, uh, 14, 15 years old. I molested a little five-year-old girl. That's when it all started. You so, said you were molested as a child. Yes. How were you molested? Well, it started off... Father and uh, mother? No, my father and mother, I was physically abused by my father. Mm -hmm. Mentally abused by my family. And sexually abused by my brother and his friends. And then how were you sexually abused? Uh, I was forced to uh, give a guy a blowjob. I was uh, fucked in the ass. How old were you? I was start. Oh, seven, six or seven. You had problems dealing with that? Not now. I did because I felt you know that's what it all was locked in. That's why I couldn't explain it to nobody. I did not understand why I was like I was. Now I know why I was like a brother. Brother still alive? Oh, yes. How do you get along with him now? We never talk. It's like uh, he's went on his own world or something. You hold it against him? No. How about his friends, even though they're not your relatives? Did you hold it I don't against even know them. them. You know, I've never seen them again, so you know, I don't hold it against him, no. I don't hold it against him. See, that, that's the part of it. You've got, to under, you've got to forgive yourself and forgive those. Before you can forgive all the other stuff, you know, if you don't, if I can't forgive myself and say, okay, yes, I know I was wrong, what I did to my stepchildren, but I was wrong because of I was also a victim. Somebody hurt me, and I hurt them. 
So it's a domino effect. We call it a Dracula effect. This is why I say this guy is probably going to do it again. If you don't catch this guy, you're going to end up having something else. And do you have it, anything else you want to Maybe in some of... Other than how would this guy react to the question of obviously whoever did this wasn't able to please these kids and he had to kill them. He just couldn't please them. He wasn't able. What question would you ask of non please You know, oh, you were... See, that's a hard because he... They were gentlemen being sexually abused and obviously whoever did this wasn't capable of fulfilling the role. He couldn't please them so he had to kill them. Would he, would he take offense to that? Not necessarily. Because let's say, it goes back to that question, it goes back to that answer of uh, you have four people who committed a murder and three are not talking. Because the problem is, how were the boys not satisfied? You know, was he doing something with them and they, they and all of a sudden they just knew that this wasn't right and they wanted to stop and he didn't want to stop? Or was it... Uh, what if they were interrupted? Interrupted? You think he would have killed them to stop from being discovered? Yeah. Because if he would have been interrupted, he would have ran. He would have took off. Because, see, he's got to play a cat and mouse game with that. I mean, if he was in an isolated area and he somebody come across on this, boom, then naturally, you would have a fourth victim on your hands. Now, there's a possibility. It's not, it's not a judge that that's not what had to take place. It's just, hypothetically say, he was molesting one child. The other two boys were out running around looking for their buddy. They came across their buddy. And this boy, this guy was probably saying he's giving them a blowjob. All of a sudden, boom, here's these two boys. And he, you know, they were like, what the hell are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And the guy, you know, the other boy, you know, he got all worried and upset. And he, because, I mean, psychologically, a child could sit there and think, you know, all of a sudden they're gay. Or uh, their buddy's seen this and they, now they think differently of him. So the guy, could, it could have been he was doing one and the other two came across. And then he decided he had to kill all three to get, keep their mouth shut. Now, that's probable. I'm not saying that's what happened. But you, you've got to isolate it all down. I mean, to put the jigsaw to puzzle with this type of case, it, you, you're, you're looking at a, a river that's got a lot of inlets. And, you know, you've got a lot of streams running off this river. And each time, and you're going through the process, I know, of, like me. Sure. You, you got this name, you go check this guy out, you ring him here, you ask him all these questions, you find out what he knows, and then you go back, you know, thanks. But I can tell you right now, this person that you're looking for, uh, this process of elimination of that is going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. This guy, he's going to do this again. The reason is because he's going to get upset. Because with all the stuff that's going on right now, and I'm not saying this is going to happen in a week or it's going to happen next month it might even happen within two years but it's going to happen again until this guy's caught okay we're about ready to conclude the interview i think uh are do you have any objections because you've been advised that i mean you you have the constitutional right not to give any samples you know you don't have to do you have any problem with giving hair samples and blood samples nope. okay uh, the reason why I'm saying it, because I know I'm not involved in this. I'm, I don't have to worry about it. You just in case it. somebody hey, says, want, this person may have something to do with you it. We've got your I'll, samples. I'll, I'll, you said it's I'll a for process of elimination. And as right. slow and as treacherous as that is, that's about what Now, off record, mm -hmm. can y'all ask me a few questions that curious as me? I don't actually have the authority to because we've got particulars about this case that we cannot give. Now, if you ask something that's general information right now, maybe I can give you a yes yeah, or no. The person that knows exactly what went on down there, like you said yourself, is four people. 
And three are dead. And we won't. We're not talking. That's right. And, and we don't want some cook to show up and say, hey, I did all this for him. Unless he knows these exact things that in occurrences, he couldn't have done it. And we only want one person to be, have that knowledge to be able to tell us. You're not going to get this guy to come in and make it. The only way you're going to find this guy. The only way. I figure the only way is exactly what we're doing is taking samples and comparing to what we've got. Scientific. That's perhaps. That's, that that's, that's a good idea. If he does this again, if he does this again. But then what he, here's the thing. You're going to have a guy who's going to come in. You're going to be questioning him. And he might refuse to give these things. You know, I don't have to. I have the right. And I have enough information, I have enough witnesses who know where the hell I was at the time that the whole thing happened. So, I mean, there's no reason for me to be guilty. You know, I have no reason to be guilty. Just so I don't know. Okay. And these are not the only shoes I wear. Oh, I understand that. <laughs> you got to realize that. Well, I'm going to conclude the interview and we're going to set up this polygraph and these samples and... Okay. No problem. Ain't no problem with me. Time is 11-11.